Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel IS Steno. We are starting the passage at speed of 100 word per minute. Start. Our primary task should be to ensure that a society may draw inspiration from the constitution and our constitution may become the priceless possession of the common man thus leading to the progressive socialization of our constitution and increasing constitutionalization of our society and to the consequent removal of walls of alienation and the reduction of distances between the citizen and the constitution it is true that our constitution has had to be enabled frequently but that only serves to show that ours is a living and a growing constitutional system responsive to the challenges of swiftly moving times to a large extent many of the constitutional amendments came in the train of territorial changes reorganization of states judicial decisions and land reforms in several cases the amendments were necessitated by pressing social urges necessities and were effected for the implementation of the directive principles of state policy the amendments have however not in any way changed the essential identity of our constitution i may add the basically the amending process helps to facilitate the infusion of contemporary perceptions into the constitution and is an essential part of the crucible of constitutional dynamics the relative flexibility of the our constitution is indeed its greatest strength preventing it from becoming an intolerable milestone around the neck of each successive generation and at the same time enabling it to renew and reinforce itself we have established a secular state as an enlightened and authentic expression of our traditions of tolerance and as an embodiment of the composite culture of india the constitution decrees that the state should honor all religions without preferring or promoting one at the cost of another and at the educational linguistic and cultural rights of all sections of the people thus protecting our pluralism and fostering unity in diversity and autonomy within integration our constitution is sworn to protect the dignity of man the fundamental rights guaranteed by the constitution and the directive principles which are recognized to be fundamental in the governance of the country constitute the core and the conscience of a free and open society striving to achieve social justice rule of law and equality of opportunity no doubt we have miles and miles to go and many promises to keep and we have many difficulties to surmount around us democracy is the pulsating passion of our constitution it is in the name of the people that the constitution was made and proclaimed and it is the people it seeks to enthrone in the sovereign seat of power when pandit jawahar lal nehru spoke of india's triest with destiny and our unending quest and 
incessant striving through trackless centuries he thought of the people of india marching onwards and from one milestone to another the people and their welfare is what the constitution is committed to it is in the service of these teeming millions that the constitution makes its covenants the father of the nation gave us a talisman and asked us to recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man in any movement of doubt or difficulty referring to bapu and his message pandit jawaharlal nehru has said on the eve of our independence in words which have the same resonance and relicance today the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye that may be beyond us but as long as there are tears and suffering so long our work will not be over and that is the pledge which tolls and reverberates for us continuously and that is the pledge we must rededicate ourselves to redeem it has been a sound practice and a practice which would successfully prevent governors from being exposed to political controversies that in situations where ministries resign or are threatened with defeat the governor should fully explore all possibilities to ensure that the normal constitutional machinery continues to function it is only when he fails in this attempt that the governor has necessarily to think in terms of recommending to the president for invoking powers conferred on the president for under article 365 there has been a general consensus that whenever a governor has to make any such recommendation to the governor should do so in exercise of his own impartial objective and independent judgment you are all aware that during the last several years it has been the practice to lay before parliament the reports of the governors to the president setting out the reasons weighed with them in recommending action under article 356 consequently the reports have been the subject of critical scrutiny not only in parliament but also by the general public and in a democracy such as ours it is right that there should not be any suspicion about the governor's functioning stop